from educating citizens of the world on Sri Lanka to aid in the advancement of Sri Lankan community worldwide, to empower and to inspire, to give hope for a better tomorrow. We are Sri Lanka Foundation International, USA. Sri Lanka Foundation is a non-profit organization formed in June 2003 by Dr. Walter Jaisingha, a well-known Sri Lankan American physician in Los Angeles, with its head office in Los Angeles, California. Our vision is to educate the citizens of the world on Sri Lanka and the achievements of its people as well as aid in the advancement of the Sri Lankan community worldwide. We also seek to empower and inspire hope for improved lives and livelihoods of Sri Lankans and related communities worldwide. The purpose is to bring our mission statement to all expatriate Sri Lankans around the globe and to mobilize Sri Lanka Foundation and bring to life the five pillars as day-to-day -day efforts. The five pillars of Sri Lanka Foundation, abbreviated as REACH, are Recognize our community members around the globe. This is the time to get the community together Show them what these people have done, give them recognition within our community. Exhibit Sri Lankan culture to other nationalities. I think soon the Sri Lanka festival Along will be known along with the Rose Bowl game as one of the premier events. Enlighten the youth of the Sri Lankan culture to nurture our heritage. Connect expatriates around the world through exchange services. Help Sri Lanka through SLF on the ground, our philanthropic endeavors.
Hi everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm Keshini Vijayagun Ratna, the Director of Project Management and Public Relations for the Sri Lanka Foundation International. On behalf of the Sri Lanka Foundation International and the entire Sri Lankan American community, we are so honored and would like to extend a sincere gratitude to the US ambassador designate to Sri Lanka, Her Excellency Julie Chung for giving us this opportunity to meet with her. I also extend my sincere gratitude to Jennifer Miller, the senior advisor for the US State Department, domestic outreach and partnerships for all her support to organize this meeting. A quick thank you to the Sri Lanka Foundation Management and the staff for their support and also the panel of speakers for giving me this opportunity to work with them to prepare for this meeting. Now, without further delay, the moment you've been waiting for, I would like to invite Shirani Saniswa, the Chief Operating Officer of the Sri Lanka Foundation International to introduce the US Ambassador Designate to Sri Lanka, Her Excellency, Julie Chung. Over to you, Shirani. Thank you, Keshini. Good afternoon and good evening. My name is Shirani Stanislaus, Chief Operating Officer of Sri Lanka Foundation International USA. It is an honor and a privilege to introduce Ms. Julie Chung, the US Ambassador Designate to the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka. Julie Chung was confirmed as the US ambassador to the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka on December 18, 2021. She formally served as the acting assistant secretary in the Bureau of Western Hemisphere Affairs from July 2021, from January 2021, excuse me, to July 2021. Ambassador designate Chan assumed the position of Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary in the Bureau of Western Hemisphere Affairs in November, 2018. She was previously the Director for Japan in Bureau of East Asian and Pacific Affairs and served as Acting Deputy Assistant Secretary from February to September, 2018. As a career member of the Senior Foreign Service, Class of Minister Counselor, she held positions as the Deputy Chief of Mission in Cambodia and Economic Counselor in Thailand. Ambassador Designate Chang served as the Deputy Political Counselor in Bogota, where she managed the US government's largest extradition program, including paramilitary and narco trafficking cases. As the United States representative to the G24 in Bogota, Ambassador Designate Chang led initiatives focused on demining, labor, and human rights. In Baghdad, she served as chief of staff coordinating civilian military foreign assistance with 13 agencies and sections and managed the interagency emergency assistance coordination team in response to suicide bombings. While working in the office of Korea, Korean affairs in Washington, she frequently traveled to the Democratic People's Republic of Korea to implement the US North Korea agreed framework. She also served in Guangzhou, Tokyo, and Hanoi as a public diplomacy officer and APEC coordinator. Ambassador designate Chang is from Huntington Beach, California, and joined the Foreign Service in 1996 as the first cohort of the Thomas R. Pickering Fellowship Program. She received a BA in Political Science from the University of California, San Diego, and an MA in International Affairs from Columbia University. Her foreign languages include Korean, Japanese, Spanish, 
and Crimea. Over to you, Madam Chair. Thank you so much for the warm welcome. And I love that video of the Sri Lankan Foundation and to see how active you've been even throughout COVID when you had to do a lot of things virtually and online as we've learned to do. But I really want to thank you all for taking the time to join me here today, everywhere from New York to California and beyond. And I really want to share with you and hear from you today um, to hear your thoughts on how to leverage partnerships between the Sri Lankan American community and the embassy in Colombo to further support our bilateral friendship and relationship. Now, as I get ready to depart for Sri Lanka next week, I'm just starting to pack my bag still. Uh, one of my top priorities is to engage with all of you, with the Sri Lankan diaspora of every background. You may have heard me say that even during my confirmation Senate hearing, the importance of the uh, Sri Lankan diaspora. Now, the U.S. and Sri Lanka, as you know, are, collaborate across a wide range of areas, and I'm looking forward to growing that partnership even further. This past year, we worked together to respond to maritime environmental disasters, support affected communities, promote sustainable economic development, and also increase opportunities for women and small businesses. Now, since the start of the pandemic, the U.S. has also donated 3.4 million vaccines and nearly $18 million in additional assistance to support Sri Lanka's COVID-19 response. And I had a chance to talk to some US major US companies earlier in the week as well through the Chamber of Commerce and to hear all about their donations and efforts on this effort as well. Now, as ambassador, I wanna leverage US programs too to support local entrepreneurship as well as sustainable and inclusive economic development in Sri Lanka. In 2021 alone, the U.S. Development Finance Corporation provided $265 million in loans for Sri Lankan small and medium-sized enterprises, and especially women-owned businesses in, in priority sectors. And at least 40% of these loans will be granted to businesses that are owned by women, led by women, or provide services that empower women, which I think is really powerful. We're also supporting entrepreneurs through our USCID ULEAD project and the South Asia Leadership in Entrepreneurship project, which is called SAIL. The ULEAD uh, works to increase youth employment and growing industrial sectors such as construction, tourism, and IT. And SAIL encourages entrepreneurship and an enabling environment for startup businesses through mentorship programs and training with a focus on digital economy and e-commerce, which is really the next generation of industries to come. I'm looking forward to further growing economic and commercial opportunities between the US and Sri Lanka. Now, as we all know, Sri Lanka is in the midst of a balance of payments crisis. We can't forget that, exacerbated by the pandemic, but rooted in long run trends of debt driven growth that has really become unsustainable. And as Sri Lanka's largest export market, we really, the United States can play a large role in helping Sri Lanka succeed economically, sustainably in the long run. And we see potential for growth in our economic relationship, including in sectors that have strong prospects for growth, like energy, agriculture, tourism, cyber, security, telecommunications, and IT, of course. Tackling climate change is also another key area of our partnership. We know the vulnerabilities that Sri Lanka faces on climate. And the U.S. is supporting Sri Lanka's ambitious climate and clean energy goals by achieving 70% renewable energy by 2030 and reaching net zero carbon emissions by 2050. Now, those are very ambitious goals. And USAID and the State Department's Bureau of Energy Resources are helping the government of Sri Lanka uh, make its power sector market-based, secure, reliable, and sustainable in order to attract investments to bring Sri Lanka closer to reaching those renewable energy deals and goals. Now, working with the people and government of Sri Lanka to make progress on human rights, democracy, religious freedom, post-war reconciliation, and accountability for human rights abuses will be a high, high priority during my tenure as ambassador. In fact, these are the issues that will enable a broader partnership with the government. It will open up our space for our government 
and our two uh, sides to really work on other areas of concern like infrastructure projects, maritime security, climate and clean energy programs. A lasting peace depends on all Sri Lankans working together to resolve these issues together. As you also know, the United States has rejoined the United Nations Human Rights Council. We will have a bigger role than puts us in a really strong position to urge the government of Sri Lanka to make concrete reforms on reconciliation, accountability, and human rights at the upcoming sessions. And of course, our long history of people-to-people -people ties, the vital link between the US and Sri Lanka. These ties are represented, many of you here in academic, scholar exchanges, businesses, and also the vibrant diaspora. This year, we're celebrating the 70th anniversary of the Fulbright Exchange Program in Sri Lanka, which in, since 1952, over 1,100 senior researchers and students from, from the United States and Sri Lanka have learned and researched in each other's countries. And even outside of the Fulbright Program, there are thousands of Sri Lankans who come to the United States every year to pursue higher education, often the first step in a lifelong relationship with the country. Also, our International Visitors Leadership Program builds lasting connections between Sri Lankans and Americans through professional exchanges. So I look forward to meeting with alumni and building on those ties during my tenure in Sri Lanka. We're also looking forward to the return of the Peace Corps to Sri Lanka. Hopefully by the end of next year or early next year, we hope to grow that program in the next three to five years and eventually get up to 100, 150 volunteers to serve all over Sri Lanka, principally to support English language development with volunteers co-teaching with Sri Lankan teachers. I'm really glad to be here today because again, you are a vital voice. Your expertise, your experience, your personal connections, your family connections, all that contributes to how we can be better in expanding and broadening our relationship. And hopefully we'll get over this COVID era soon. I really want to be able to see you and meet you in person. I am from Southern California, so I would love to come uh, see you in Los Angeles and get back to my hometown and um, engage in a lot of ways together. And finally, as you may have also seen uh, from my bio, I'm a naturalized US citizen, as some of you are as well. So I immigrated to the United States as an immigrant when I was five years old from Korea. So I know the values of what immigrants and the diaspora can bring when we go to the United States, make this our new home, but still have ties to the country where we were born in. So it's really meaningful for me to hear from you, fellow immigrants, as an ambassador going out to Sri Lanka. And finally, because I'm from California, of course, I'm gonna cheer for the Rams this weekend in the Super Bowl. So there better not be any Bengals uh, fans on this call, but just kidding. <laughs> but I know there'll be many uh, Rams fans cheering on the Los Angeles Rams this Sunday. So with that, I'll turn it over to you. And I really wanna hear from you, your views, your concerns, your ideas, and your suggestions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Your Excellency. I'm so excited to hear your remarks because some of the programs that you had mentioned, Sri Lankan American community is right on. So, and we hope that we'll get to have more roundtable discussions with you. And if I come to Sri Lanka, I want to come and see you. With that message, I, I um, with great pleasure and honor, now I invite the chairman of the board of the Sri Lanka Foundation International, Dr. Walter Jai Singer. Dr. J, over to you. And also, oh. just before you start, yeah. The beautiful lady that's sitting by Dr. J is Ayesha Jaya Singh, the Vice President for the Sri Lanka Foundation. Go ahead, Dr. J. Sorry about that. Okay. Well, first and foremost, uh, it's a great, great honor to have Madam Chang as Ambassador to Sri Lanka because I have uh, been waiting to see uh, a minority community person coming to a minority country like ours. And uh, she'll be one because, in fact, I was the first doctor in Koreatown in Los Angeles in 1972, when I first uh, started practicing in Los Angeles. And uh, thereafter, Koreatown grew into a huge area. I became a gynecologist after that, and I've been practicing in downtown LA since then, 42 years. Now, let's forget that now. 50 years ago, I came to US as a student and later got my green card. I did research at City of Hope Medical Center, student of UCLA, 
graduated and practiced. During this time, I got into social work. Mayor Yorty, one of the famous mayors of Los Angeles, gave me the key to the city. What did I do? I spoke about Sri Lanka and about our culture in organizations wherever I could go to in Los Angeles. Then I suddenly realized not only us, the immigrant population in LA, but Sri Lanka itself needs what we are looking for in LA. That is equipment, not necessarily new things, used equipment, used even you, at that time there were no disposable syringes, even used syringes, needles were re-sterilized and sent to Sri Lanka. We did a lot of work like collecting stuff, um, medications, bandages and other things that were re-sterilized, sent back to Sri Lanka. And from there started helping Sri Lankan society in so many ways. We started the company called uh, Helping the Helpless and uh, we donating things to the helpless people, the, the women who are desperately in need of housing. Now we are running a uh, uh, hostel and we are also starting a school that has been abandoned for the poor children. Now, what else? We have been recently sending all these equipment, oxygen generators and uh, respirators to various hospitals in Sri Lanka. I think the uh, foundation collected about $150,000 worth of stuff and shipped them to Sri Lanka. Those are a few things that we could do. I am starting a hospital. We are building a hospital in Sri Lanka for 150 beds that will take the American technologies to Sri Lanka. In addition to that, I like to join hands with whatever the embassy wants us to do because we do have talent here. Lots of talented uh, Sri Lankan expatriates like to go back and help in Sri Lanka. And sometimes we do not get that necessary cooperation from Sri Lankan, uh, you know, the standard uh, organizations because they do not trust immigrants coming back and trying to help. There's so too much competition for them. So remember the time that we had a tsunami, lots of doctors, including lots of uh, American doctors went to Sri Lanka. They had a certain amount of resistance by the Sri Lankan professionals because they felt that these doctors are in competition with them. That was not so. It was always our people went there, not for money, just to help. So with that spirit, I want to tell the ambassador designate Madam Chang, that we are there to cooperate with the embassy on whatever we could do together with the embassy because we are Americans, although we are Sri Lankan origin. So we go there as Americans coming back to help the motherland. That's where I stand. And uh, Sri Lanka Foundation, you've heard about it. Uh, we'll work along with the embassy. Thank you very much. That's my introduction. But thank you, Dr. J. First of all, I saw that people call you Dr. J. And the owner of Dr. J in my life is my dad. My dad is Dr. J Chung. And he goes by Dr. J. <laughs> so now I'm the second Dr. J. But, uh, you know, my respect has to go to my father first. But um, absolutely, I want to partner with you, work with you. And I've seen this, you know, whether it's a Cambodian American and a Vietnamese American or Korean Americans, especially the youth who want to go back. And either they weren't born there, so they want to learn about their heritage, or the older generation who want to go back and contribute. They have so much to offer. And yes, there are some resistance and wariness about that. And I want to break down those barriers with you. And as an immigrant myself, I think I have a great voice to join you in all these endeavors. So thank you. Thank you. Now I'm going to hand over the platform to our panel. And our first speaker is Mr. Sanji Sedra from Las Vegas, Nevada. Sanji, over to you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon to all. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate uh, Madam Ambassador Chung uh, for your appointment to uh, Sri Lanka. And I also want to commend the Department of State for taking the initiative to have a discussion with the stakeholders of the uh, Sri Lankan American community. Uh, given the time constraints we have, I will jump right into how your office could assist uh, to uplift the economy in Sri Lanka. So I'm gonna to touch uh, on uh, four key aspects. Uh, the Sri Lanka America Chamber of Commerce uh, has had several uh, rounds of discussions with the highest ranking officials of the Export Development Board uh, of Sri Lanka to open up unexplored avenues to uh, exporters in Sri Lanka. 
Uh, we are also working in conjunction with the Depart uh, United States Department of Commerce, uh, Commercial Law uh, Development Program, and the respective trade ministers of the Sri Lankan missions in USA uh, to explore the opportunities in trade shows in USA. Um, so having a footprint in the world-class trade shows is paramount for the exporters in Sri Lanka to create uh, much needed international market exposure. Uh, so it is our understanding uh, that the Sri Lankan exporters have not been consistently exposed to such trade shows due to uh, economic constraints and the stringent visa process. Uh, so this initiative to be successful, there has to be opportunities presented to the uh, mid to large exporters in Sri Lanka. Uh, also, we have initiated uh, Twin City or the Sister City concept, uh, uh, twinning uh, initially as Las Vegas with the Port City in Sri Lanka. So that's an initiative that we have started with the Sri Lanka America Chamber of Commerce as well. The second aspect I want to touch is the, the US Sri Lanka Trade Invest Investment uh, Framework or TIFA. Uh, the last joint council meeting was held in uh, June 19, 2019 in Colombo. Uh, we would like to see uh, to have it continued in 2022 and beyond because we have seen great uh, results have come out of that program. Uh, thirdly, as you know, uh, United States is facing a tremendous labor shortage in, uh, in the fields of teaching and nursing. Uh, Sri Lanka also has high number of skilled teachers and nurses who could uh, fill, uh, fulfill these positions. Uh, we have seen successful partnerships have been forged between uh, Philippines and USA to fill these vacancies. Uh, through our chamber, we have started some initial discussions with some of the universities in Sri Lanka to produce the graduates that could take on these jobs uh, easily. Obviously, for such programs to be successful, we need to work uh, very uh, closely with the US Embassy in Sri Lanka. Uh, finally, uh, the depleted foreign reserves have halted major imports to Sri Lanka. Uh, also the unfavorable uh, sovereign credit ratings and the outlook from the uh, major global credit rating agencies have caused significant uneasiness for a US-based investor to invest in Sri Lanka. Uh, further, the imports to Sri Lanka has require, uh, that require uh, letters of credit have come to a standstill due to these reasons. So in light of this, uh, we think this may be the most opportune time for the Millennium Challenge Corporation to reconsider its grant program to Sri Lanka, the Sri Lanka Compact. Uh, Sri Lanka doesn't need another credit line or a handout, but the capital infusion to an estimated 11 million Sri Lankans who would directly benefit uh, from a compact which addresses the foundational economic issues in the country and rebuild the transport infrastructure and the land administration to reduce traffic congestion and also improve public transportation and so forth. And also the Sri Lankan government programs to safeguard land records and strengthen the land rights for Sri Lankan citizens. Uh, with that, um, that's all I have to add and be really looking forward to working with your office because we have a lot to accomplish in a short time. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sadara. And all the things that you mentioned, the TIFA and the sister city and, and the economic opportunities and the labor, the human resources aspect, I do see a lot of potential in that and working together uh, with you and the teams in the Sri Lankan Foundation. So thank you for raising those issues. Thank you again, Sanji and Your Excellency. Uh, our next speaker is Dr. Nirmalani Gunawardana from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Over to you, Lani. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to present on the US Sri Lanka Academic and Research Network which we in the state of New Mexico are coordinating. Currently, I'm distinguished professor at the University of New Mexico. So I took on this responsibility of coordinating this network uh, when it was initiated. Uh, it was initiated by the former Sri Lankan ambassador to the United States, Raminatha Arya Singha, but functions as an independent informal network of volunteer professionals. This is a virtual, co-mentoring network of volunteer professionals in the US and Sri Lanka, engaging in disciplinary, multidisciplinary and cross-disciplinary collaborations. So now we have 12 groups working on collaborations with predominantly new universities in Sri Lanka, which need to establish international connections. And also secondary schools, we also aim to work with uh, vocational institutes. Some of our successors include the following. 
So first of all, I'd like to talk about the collaborations we have with universities and then with schools. The, biomed the biomedical group provided 24 seven volunteer telemedicine mentoring to medical students in Sri Lanka on how to manage COVID-19 patients who were quarantined at home. The team science and professional development group conducted workshops on designing and assessing student-centered online learning for fac the Faculty of Agriculture at Wyambi University. And the chemistry group conducted training for the Faculty of Applied Sciences at Rajaratu University and is collaborating with the University of Kalania on nanobiotechnology projects. Then to support the development of transportation infrastructure in Sri Lanka, the engineering group would like to establish a bridge engineering research center. Perhaps the embassy could identify resources for this group. A mechanical engineering undergraduate project with the University of Peradeniya requires access to high performance computers for its undergraduate students. The project focuses on modeling the planetary boundary layer for complex terrain that is really improving weather prediction at and atmospheric sciences. So many of us in the network are faculty at US universities, and we have supervised doctoral students in Sri Lanka in several universities in Sri Lanka and continue to do so. So some of our work with the schools involve the following two projects. The biomedical group is in the process of conducting discussions on who is a scientist for secondary school students, these are students who are studying for their GCE O level and A level. Uh, and we are starting with Richmond College in Gaul. And the physics group is planning to popularize physics for high school students, especially female students in rural areas in Matara and Badagama. So some of the ways in which the embassy can support these volunteer projects in Sri Lanka include the following. Uh, one thing is improving access to internet or Wi-Fi in rural schools. Uh, it is difficult to work with, we would like to work with rural schools, but the access to Wi-Fi is very limited. And so therefore our projects are limited. Uh, high performance computer access for undergraduate engineering projects would be wonderful. They can do more sophisticated modeling with that. And supporting the establishment of a research center for bridge engineering is one project that we would like to pursue with you. And for medical students, improving access to online resources, including clinical practice, evidence-based guidelines, journals, and electronic books. So these are some of the work that we, uh, projects we have been involved in since our inception last August and would love to work with you and collaborate with you to further these projects. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gunawardana. I feel like I'm the only non-doctor on this call, by the way. Everyone's a doctor except me. Um, I love the higher education focus and the young people focus. That is one of the great, greatest things, the values that we offer as United States. We know that our edu higher education is the best in the world. So uh, I think you have some really great ideas there, especially on STEM and engineering. I mentioned previously, my dad, dad is a doctor, Dr. J. So my dad is an engineering, aerospace engineer, and he still is working at the age of 76. And he helped develop the, um, the arm of the robotic arm of the Mars rover and, worked and many of the space shuttle heating systems. So um, yeah, I'm a big fan of the strength of engineering and, and what we can bring to the potential of students and youth of Sri Lanka. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lonnie, and thank you, Madam Chung. Let's move on to our next speaker is Dr. Shiro Vithalanachi from New York, New York. Shiro, over to you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Shiro Vithalanachi, and I was an aerospace engineer, but now I'm faculty in the Department of Economics and Business at Queens College, the City University of New York. Thank you, Madam Ambassador, for inviting me to be a part of this panel and to the Sri Lanka Foundation for creating this space to highlight educational opportunities. So I'm a part of the business and finance group in the US Sri Lanka academic and research network that Dr. Lani Gunawardana just specified. Members of our group are individuals in the fields of economics, accounting, trade, business law, and management. We are volunteers who share our knowledge and experience with fellow Sri Lankans as part of this initiative. 
So the goal of this business and finance group is to bring together a team of academics and professionals for one thing to facilitate faculty and student exchange, globalize curriculums, and build relationships with new post-secondary institutions that might not have extensive international connections and along the way assist marginalized students. Um, I would like to share with you one of our current projects and that's the East West Center at the University of Hawaii. Um, the former Sri Lankan ambassador to the US was actually keen to revive our connection with the East West Center. And our own Ms. Keshini Vijay Gunaratnav, our host today at the Sri Lanka Foundation, has made successful progress with the Dean of Education programs at the center. Keshini was able to secure about 11 prospective applicants from Sri Lanka. We now know how we can help them. Students need assistance in the English language. This is a dimension where the US Embassy could perhaps help through the American Center in Colombo, or like you mentioned, the Peace Corps. Uh, another area of assistance is through Fulbright opportunities. Since our goal is to expand US-Sri Lanka collaborations, Fulbright could expand awards not only for research, but also for teaching and for international education administrators. Also, the commission could um, develop awards beyond traditional disciplines, and the traditional disciplines have been agriculture, engineering, medicine, religion, environmental science. It could be extended to innovative areas like business analytics, like digital economics you mentioned, cybersecurity, and, and so on. I'll give you a quick example. Um, the US-UK Fulbright Commission recently introduced this initiative that invited faculty to co-deliver a virtual exchange course for undergraduate students that focused on a specific global challenge, either racial justice, pandemics, climate change. And this was timely because virtual exchange is such a hot topic right now. These are the kinds of initiatives that are needed to showcase the culture and the brilliant minds of Sri Lanka. And I can personally assist with this because this is my background in research and teaching, virtual exchange. And of course, this can also bring positive Asian awareness to the US. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much for those really creative ideas. Uh, I just, I wanna explore all these ideas with you. And then also thank you for reminding us that you, know, you all have your day jobs. You all have uh, very busy, important jobs and you spend so much time volunteering and dedicating your time and resources to strengthening these relations and these people to people ties. So that is so very appreciated. Thank you, Dr. Vitanachi. Let's move on to the next speaker. Uh, Tushita De Silva from Pasadena, California. Tushita, over to you. Hi, uh, very good afternoon to you all. First of all, uh, I would like to uh, begin by giving my sincere thanks to the Sri Lanka Foundation for giving me this uh, great opportunity to, uh, to speak uh, with Honorable Ambassador, Ms. Julie Chan. My name is Tosita De Silva. Uh, throughout my career, I have organized 32 musical shows from 2005 to 2022 in USA with 200 plus uh, musicians. All of them traveled to the US from Sri Lanka and the P3 visa. This show provided a platform for the Sri Lankan community living in the USA to appreciate and embrace their culture and to educate the US born young generation about their culture roots. Fan even got the opportunity to meet their favorite artists in person doing these shows and speak with them. That is very hard to come by back home. These shows also generate a revenue stream uh, for US by way of uh, visa fees, domestic air travel, hotel accommodations, auditorium rental, hiring of technician. Also for Sri Lanka, they uh, provided an opportunity to obtain foreign currency into its economy. Recently, uh, I have experienced a situation where even though a P3 visa in, is approved, by the State Department, when an artist show up at the U.S. Embassy in Colombo, that visa is rejected. This is uh, 
affect uh, U.S. organizers in many ways. First, the financial loss, loss when you rent a deposit, penalties for cancellation of contract with the organization in other states, cancellation of air tickets. Also, it damages our reputation and more with uh, members due to our inability to pull the event off for the reason beyond our control. Lastly, the mental issue uh, stress caused by all this. So I would like to draw Honorable Ambassador attention to this issue and to receive a favorable solution. Thank you very much again. Thank you, Mr. De Silva. I think those cultural, I think I saw some in the video at the beginning, some of the cultural performances that are so powerful and especially to get the young people involved. In terms of visa, of course, those are based on strict American uh, US uh, immigration and naturalization rules and laws. But I think we should have those um, you know, discussions early on to see you know, potential applicants and their, you know, their eligibility criteria and make sure they have all their documents prepared and ready for the interview at the embassy. But I know that the visa issues are particularly uh, challenging, um, not just in Sri Lanka, but everywhere. We, we want to work with you on this. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Tushita, and thank you, Your Excellency. Our next speaker is Rohan Sauja from Torrance, California. Rohan, over to you. Uh, thank you, Keshini. Uh, Madam Ambassador uh, Chang, I'm happy to be here and uh, to just a brief uh, introduction of myself. Uh, my name is Rohan Sauja. I represent the Sri Lanka Muslim Association of California, uh, and it's a 20 over year organization. Uh, and also, I am the president of the Royal College Old Boys Union. Uh, also known as Rockabana, uh, where we do a lot of these projects that we just discussed. We have scholarship programs. We have uh, uh, English uh, language classes. Right now, we are doing a lot of them online. And also, we have uh, uh, other sports, uh, uh, promoting sports uh, back in our uh, alum, uh, college back in Sri Lanka. And... Um, Furthermore, I also represent uh, a volunteer with the city attorney's department as a facilitator in the neighborhood justice program, and also the chaplain of the Redondo Beach uh, Police Department. And besides my business that I have, that I uh, help the Sri Lankan community and also the small businesses in Sri Lanka. So I own Trico Maritime, it's a shipping company, freight forwarder. And I come across a lot of uh, people interested in doing imports and exports between our two countries. Um, today, my uh, message is basically, it's my hope and prayer that our beautiful island, Sri Lanka, is protected from outside influences. Our citizens have coexisted with peace and harmony and become the fabric of our nation, Sri Lanka. It is a... Uh, a unique island with several religions and ethnicities uh, intermingled with marriages, business partnerships, and political affiliations. As an example, my family, I am married to a Christian. My uh, brother is married to a, uh, a Filipino. So we have all uh, combinations, and that's the fabric of a typical Sri Lankan, I, I would say. We are blessed with a generous uh, expatriate community, I should say, here in LA, uh, that we are able to put together relief efforts in very short notice. These relief efforts uh, are by way of funds and material supplies when Sri Lanka is stuck with natural disaster or pandemics, uh, such as the COVID-19 and destructions caused by extremist elements. So at every time that there has been a situation we have been able to bring our community together and uh, do something to help uh, Sri Lanka. One good example is uh, when we had floods, I got all the communities uh, and organizations together and we had a drive-through where people came, dropped off uh, relief supplies and they were so like, uh, uh, emotionally touched and they too like helped us in 
uh, doing the work, like loading the container and stuff like that. So these uh, are some of the uh, areas that our organization will look forward to the US embassy in Sri Lanka to overlook. Because when we do these relief efforts at that end, we need some support to make sure that donations coming from we citizens from of USA are like taken good care of and to make sure that it meets its end use and goes to the right people. Furthermore, it's not uh, entered in any partitioning borders or fences separating us by religion, race, color, or caste. That's my one prayer, one request that, because we enjoyed Sri Lanka as one nation and we all like played sports together. We uh, uh, contributed in social organizations and musical events, everything as one. So let's not change that. Please help Sri Lanka maintain and expand this beautiful and unique texture that none can match throughout our long history. During the tsunami, we were able to send four 40 foot containers and help rebuild schools, libraries, get small businesses back on their feet. These are some of the things that the Sri Lanka Muslim Association did, like giving the fishing folks boats to restart their businesses and other small uh, business we financed them. Uh, we uh, donated funds towards the hospital supplies for the ongoing fight against the COVID-19. We also provided dry rations to the COVID-affected families who, uh, during the last couple of months. So the last uh, uh, distribution, I, was, I had the pleasure of being there and uh, clearing the cargo myself, handing things over to the affected, the COVID affected uh, families and their widowed uh, wives. So that was something really, really something that I felt that how could we sleep at night when we know that these families are suffering over there. So these are the efforts that we uh, like to achieve uh, at that end to make it smooth and to be supervised whenever we American citizens have to do or would like to do because we have enough of uh, people volunteering to help and support Sri Lanka. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Soja. Of course, anything the embassy can do to help facilitate all these donations, we're happy to work with you. It's amazing you have time to do all that's on top of uh, your work and your CEO has your company. But I do agree with you, the multi-ethnic, multi-religious dimensions and some of the challenges that still are undergoing uh, by the Muslim, but many uh, of the population groups in Sri Lanka. I mean, you look at the United States, we are a multi-ethnic, multi-religious society. And so there's a lot we can learn from each other. Uh, and then on, on the, these kinds of donations and COVID, you know, again, when I talked to the U.S. companies earlier this week, I heard from Coca-Cola or Google or um, Uber on what they were doing. Each company would seem to be doing their own thing, you know, one-off donation by this company, that company. What I would like to see is for us to show the strength of Team America, you know, diaspora, U.S. companies, NGOs, all working together and how we're supporting the Sri Lankan people during the period of COVID with immediate supplies, but ongoing health capacity. I think that's a great story to tell that's been untold. So I look forward to working with the foundation on that. Thank you, Thank Rohan. You. Thank you, Madam Chang. You. Our next speaker is Lucky Rajasinghe from Fontana, California. Lucky, over to you. Thank you. I'm Lucky Rajasinghe, leader of the Sri Lanka at Heart organization and the President of Ananda College, All Boys Association of West Coast. We thank you, Madam Ambassador, and the Sri Lanka Foundation for inviting us for this dialogue. As COVID-19 was raging in Sri Lanka in June 2021, noting the critical shortage of oxygen to patients, Sri Lanka at heart decided to help by sending oxygen concentrators and pulse oximeters to Sri Lanka. All organizations working with Sri Lanka at heart raise around 140,000 US dollars within two weeks. With the insights and management of Dr. Walter Jaisinga and Sri Lanka Foundation, we were able to send necessary oxygen concentrators and pulse oximeters to 50 hospitals in Sri Lanka, completing the project in just four weeks. 
the highlight of the campaign was purchase, purchasing of quality products through the local agents and sending much needed foreign exchange to Sri Lanka. Distribution covered places like Telipali, Kilinochi, Mana, Monragala, and Rakpana, where no proper uh, equipment was available. It was very heartening to note the praise we received from the medical staff of Telipali, a remote hospital in, in the north, for sending them the much needed life-saving equipment in a timely manner. But the story was the same from all hospitals. For all the equipment, we uh, were transported and installed under the supervision of Rotary Club of Colombo. Sri Lanka is not out of the wood on COVID front. 8 to 10% of those getting infected by COVID variants are children under the age of 10 and are lagging necessary equipment to assess and care for the for post recovery after fix. Peradinia, one of the two pediatric hospitals in Sri Lanka, serving central to northern region, is short of some major medical equipment for post care. While trying to raise the awareness to save a future of a child, it was felt the need to educate Sri Lankan medical professionals on the knowledge base available in USA on post pediatric care on viral infections such as COVID by connecting them with CDC and learning modern trends and practices in institutions like College of Pediatrics. Not only on epidemiology, but we also noted the gap in pediatric cardiology area, and we would like to request Madam Ambassador's help to Sri Lanka in facilitating Sri Lankan medical experts to teach at professional level by learning at institutions such as the Children Heart Project in Phoenix, in Arizona, a project by heart specialists prompted by Sri Lankan American doctors living in USA. We are very grateful to the US administration for sending 3.4 million Pfizer vaccines and $17.9 million worth of emergency medical supplies and other critical services to Sri Lanka. We would like to seek the possibility of sourcing the critical equipment necessary to the pediatric hospital serving the northern half of the country. It is sad to note that the bitterness of our disparities, like you mentioned, among the Sri Lankan diaspora is still affecting the distribution of medical equipment in an equitable way, while we see no such situations on the ground. Well, we all can do better by setting aside our agendas and egos to take care of health and welfare of 5% of the people living under the poverty line in Sri Lanka. It is our sincere wish as Sri Lankan American citizen to anticipate a clear roadmap from you, Madam Ambassador, in resolving some of the burning issues, dragging the image and functionality of Sri Lanka from an international perspective. Finally, we Sri Lankan Americans would like to congratulate you and, and wish our ambassador to our birth country, Sri Lanka, the very best. Thank you. Thank you so much for raising the concerns about equity, whether that's in distribution or the rights. Um, that's something very much at the foremost uh, of my mind as I go there. And you know what you also mentioned about mobilizing things so quickly, that is something that the US government cannot do. This is something that you all in the private sector and the communities can do so much better and quicker than we can. But whatever we can do from Colombo to help facilitate and make those connections and make sure there's equitable distribution. I know you're correct. We're not out of the woods yet on COVID. We have a lot more to do to help continue this increasing um, positive trend to make sure we get back to a global health situation um, so that we can go back to our normal lives. Thank you. Thank you, Lucky. Thank you, Madam Chung. Our next speaker is Mr. Navaratnam Nandakumaran. Nanda, over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Jolie Chang, Ambassador Designate Sri Lanka, state officials, members of the panel, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, I wish to thank the Sri Lanka Foundation for having invited me to be a participant in this panel discussion. 
I am representing a group of Sri Lankan Tamil diaspora residing in Los Angeles. The main motto of our group is to bring about peace, harmony, and prosperity to Sri Lanka, thereby motivating all people to work together irrespective of caste, creed, or religion. In doing so, our emphasis primarily is to improve the infrastructure and develop the economy, especially in the Northern and Eastern provinces of Sri Lanka. There are thousands and thousands of destitute people in both these provinces together with widows and orphans. Our group endeavors to provide the necessary minimum funding, enabling to establish themselves so that they could try to make a decent living. The type of services we have rendered today are building small structures with bathrooms, construction of tube wells, creating small cottage industries such as making of pots, pans, mats, hats, and so on, thereby encouraging people to be self-employed. We also provide medical equipment and medications, cycles and wheelchairs to the handicapped, setting up small chicken hatchery, etc. Our main goal is to create self-employment so that everyone needs to work. No money is funded to live easily without working for sale. We also have voluntary teachers who are able to teach English to these poor students. We felt that English being the universal language, it is a must for all students to enhance the speaking abilities, read and write, so that it will help them tremendously to pursue their education both home and abroad. We have additionally done projects in schools by conducting classes to these poor children. To be practicable, we provide books, materials, stationery on a constant basis together with basic components that will enable them to educate themselves. Our projects have been successful in the northern and uh, northern provinces and eastern provinces. And in northern provinces, we have done these projects in places like Mangulam, Mullaitivu, Kilinochi, Aryankulam. Uh, similarly, in the eastern province, in places such as Karwanchikudi, Kalkuda, uh, Samanturai, Koneswaram, Varachene, and so on. One might wonder as to where we are deriving funds from. We generate them hosting and holding fundraisers, events such as dinners, dances, entertainment shows, stage shows, individual contributions, donations from various entities, charitable organizations, churches, charitable institutions, etc. Having raised the funds, it is mostly channeled through a well-established entity known as IMHO. International Medical Health Organization. This organization, organization is run by professional Sri Lankan doctors practicing in USA, USA. Their main office is located in New York with a chapter in Canada. Their services are immeasurable since they do so much of relief work to the people in the North and East, as well as to other poorly developed countries around the world. They send doctors frequently to both provinces to do free services, conducting small clinics, treating the patients in the poor community. They do medical services in basic healthcare, family medicine, eye consultation, and surgical such as cataract and so on. They provide not only healthcare services, but are also involved in multivarious projects to keep all 
areas of human needs. Then, just as a matter of interest, this is there is a Montessori school located in Pasadena, LA, who sponsor needy students at our request. The school is covered by 5013, which is a tax exempt, exempt as long as they are not profit organization. This exemption is for every student they recruit. They sponsor a needy poor student in the North and Eastern provinces. A substantial amount is allocated and they do so the sponsorship with an organization known as OCS, OASIS in Sri Lanka. In conclusion, therefore, Madam Ambassador, designate, we as Sri Lankan Tamil diaspora group are seeking your leadership, assistance and help, making use of your good office to facilitate and coordinate our future projects. If found feasible, reasonable and justifiable, we intend extending this humanitarian services to the best of our abilities. We are not expecting any financial assistance at all from any government since we will find them to do so from our end here. However, we require your guidance, direction and advice to our group to carry out these projects in hand successfully to the best of satisfaction for all. Thanking you. Thank you so much for the, those ideas and, and the generosity of everything you're doing and the association is doing. And as you said, you know, economic development and jobs has to be equitable throughout Sri Lanka for all groups, for all races, for all classes and religious groups, a strong believer in that. And so uh, thank you for all your efforts you're doing from Los Angeles. Thank you. Thank you, Nanda. Thank you, Madam Chang. Our final speaker from our panel is Aishana Samarasen, actually we call him Andy, from Santa Barbara, California. Andy, over to you. Thank you. Um, Ambassador Chung, congratulations on your appointment. My name is Andy Samarasen. I'm a Sri Lankan born filmmaker in California. In uh, 2015, I was presented with the opportunity to be the executive producer and the director of photography for the first Sri Lankan commercial film production in the United States. In its first stages, uh, this project intended to include several celebrated Sri Lankan actors. The stage was essentially set, but the first challenge that presented itself was the P3 visa acquisition process. Though many of these actors are beloved names and faces in most households in Sri Lanka, their modest status and their lack of solid reputation in the United States was not enough for the US immigration to grant some of the P3 visas. Uh, this to say, the original actors we had in mind were ineligible to participate in the filming process in the US, and we needed to make adjustments accordingly. However, we were fortunate to find some other talented uh, replacement actors to bring our story to life and fill their shoes. But the movie was certainly robbed of the original purpose, tone, and intent. The unfortunate reality of the Sri Lankan film industry is that regardless of their talent, dedication, um, they remain hugely undercompensated. Uh, their lack of exceptional wealth prevent these individuals from traveling outside the country to acquire necessary and supplementary skills that they could skyrocket their careers and maybe possibly even increase the production values of the films that they are engaged in. Uh, in um, um, I'm almost certain that our actors were denied the P3 visas because the U.S. immigration at the time believed that uh, these films were uh, maybe possibly could have uh, filmed in Sri Lanka alone. But uh, this was nearly impossible because the story takes place in a foreign country uh, or USA in this uh, situation. Uh, due to the visa issues, the script was altered, uh, scenes were split. Uh, filming locations and timelines were reworked and readjusted. The situation forced our hand and we had no choice but to double our production costs um, to include some of the scenes to be filmed in Sri Lanka as well. Uh, I was later involved in a second pro project, um, another uh, Sri Lankan film, um, and we were faced with the similar challenges. 
typically with a single, a single film production, you're looking at an extremely small audience, mostly uh, concentrated in Sri Lanka. So your revenue that can be generated is, is very limited. And the, you know, it is really cost prohibitive to do these type of projects. Um, in the U.S., especially with the uh, expenses of uh, immigration, you know, paying the immigration uh, visa fees and travel expenses. Um, we noticed that uh, even with the P3 visas getting approved by the U.S. immigration, uh, sometimes they get held up and get delayed at the embassy in Colombo. And uh, we look forward to a more efficient um, the visa workflow with your leadership in Colombo, representing all of us. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Andy, for raising those issues. Again, visas are such a challenging thing, and I know that that sounds very frustrating what you had to go through. Um, I believe in the power of film, and that's a great medium of, of cultural expression and exchange. Uh, I've been involved in many film festivals you know, in many countries uh, that I've been based in. So I know I have a very personal interest in that. My husband actually went to the George Washington School of Documentary Filmmaking. So he's kind of an amateur filmmaker. So I'd love to work in a partner with, with filmmakers on, in both the United States and Sri Lanka to see what areas of partnership we can uh, develop in the coming years. And I have a follow-up question, um, Ambassador Chang, if you don't mind. Um, in, in the past, Sri Lanka has been a desirable film location for you know some of the Hollywood films. And I was uh, wondering if you have any plans to reach out to the Hollywood community to promote our cultural and environmental landscape in Sri Lanka. That's a great idea because I've seen Hollywood movies go film in Thailand, for example, uh, and they're giving a lot of incentives by the government. So again, I don't know what kind of incentives the Sri Lankan government is trying to attract these production companies because they need something to choose Thailand versus Vietnam versus Sri Lanka. I mean, the natural beauty is amazing in Sri Lanka. It's, it's unparalleled, but I think it requires some business savvy um, you know, interlocutors and policymakers on the Sri Lankan government side, maybe for, through the Tourism Bureau to go out and attract uh, the filmmakers as they make these decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Madam Chung. Also, now it's with great pleasure and honor, I invite President of the Sri Lanka Foundation, Dr. Dishan Jaising, and he's logging in from all the way from Sri Lanka. Over to you, Dishan. Hi. Uh, thank you so much uh, for having us. And, you know, when we listen to this panel, we're getting a lot of insight on what we would like to have happen, right? in uh, more coordination with your, your office and with our, our private sector. Um, but to be truthfully honest, we, we do have a lot of success in, in helping Sri Lanka and, and moving that across and that's due to meetings like this. So thank you very much for doing that and having us with you and actually being interested in, in furthering the, our goals as a group, as, as a team to further Sri Lanka's prosperity, right? Uh, we are all Americans and we're so happy to be American and, and in that light uh, to bring our American spirit back to Sri Lanka. So I just want to thank everyone for being honest and being on this call and expressing yourselves. And, and thank you, Ambassador Sean, for making this happen for us. And we can't wait to work with you in the future. And I may see you here in Sri Lanka while you're here. And that would be great. Great. Thank you, thank you all you so much. much the time too and Deshaun I don't know what time it is in Colombo right now but um really appreciate <laughs> getting up or, or getting up early but again all these ideas all the creativity your generosity your connections your passion it's your heart right you are Sri Lankan Americans it just yeah. means so much and let this be just the beginning of our relationship uh, I think just the beginning of our conversations that we're going to have I want to continue to engage with the Sri Lankan Foundation continue to work with you find solutions together. I'm really excited to get there on the ground and start traveling around and meeting different <laughs> uh, communities and tasting the food. But you really have uh, introduced me to a lot of your efforts and your work that's ongoing and I'm so appreciative. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. And we hope to work with you and look forward to, um, to our next meeting. Thank you, everyone. See you all next time. <laughs>